What we are going to discuss in this lecture video is the variation of pressure with depth. So we have here a container, and the shape of the container doesn't matter. What matters is that the container is full of fluid. And we're going to start the derivation of this problem by discussing just an arbitrary parcel of that particular fluid. So the top of the parcel of fluid is y1 below the surface, and the bottom of the parcel of fluid is y2 below the surface. And we are summing our forces. So we have a force 2, which is the water pushing up on the bottom of the box, force 1, which is the water pushing down, and I keep saying water and I really just mean a general fluid, a fluid pushing down on the top of the box, and then the weight of the parcel of fluid itself. So we're going to sum forces here. So we're going to have force 2 minus force 1 minus the weight. And this is going to sum to 0 because this parcel is not moving. Now, our goal here is to get you the variation of pressure with depth, not the variation of force with depth. So in order to get pressure into this relationship, we're starting with the idea that pressure is equal to force divided by area, or pressure times area equals force. So I'm going to take pressure 2 minus area minus pressure 1 times area minus Fg equals 0 newtons. And I love that as a general area, rather than saying area 2 or area 1, because the area of the top of our parcel of water and the area at the bottom are exactly the same. I'm now going to take each term and divide by area. So I'm going to divide area here, area here, area here, and area here. So that's going to give me P2 minus P1. And I can't divide out the area here. And then anything, 0 divided by area is still 0. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do here, so I'm not going to change anything here, but I am going to put the m times g in for the force due to gravity. All right, so I don't want to have to find the mass of this arbitrary parcel of fluid. It's very hard to find the mass of a fluid because the fluid doesn't take have a definite shape, so it's really hard to put on the scales. But what I can do is put that fluid in the container and figure out its volume and then look up its density. So we're going to start with the idea that density is equal to mass divided by volume, or that density times volume equals mass. So I'm going to take density times volume, replace the mass here. All right, so now if we look here, we have volume divided by area. So we have three dimensions divided by two dimensions, which gives us one dimension, which over here would just be the height of this parcel of fluid. So we're going to do P2 minus P1 minus rho G y2 minus y1 is equal to our 0 newtons per meter squared. All right, so I'm just going to move things over to the other side. So we can find the pressure at the bottom of the parcel of fluid by using this relationship here. Now ideally what we want to be able to do is not figure out the pressure at the bottom of the box compared to the top of the box. We want to know what the pressure is of the object based upon its depth below the surface. So let's rearrange a little bit. So we're going to take our container with our fluid, and we're going to say that y1 is equal to 0, and y2 
is equal to h, and h is going to be the depth below the surface. So that means that when we look at the equation that we had before, P1 becomes what is above the top of the fluid, which is going to be the atmosphere. And we refer to atmospheric pressure or surface pressure as P0, and that's going to be 1.013 times 10 to the 5 pascals on the Earth's surface. Y2 we said is now going to be H, and Y1 is going to be 0. Instead of calling it P2, we're going to call this PA, and PA is absolute pressure. And this is going to be in contrast to gauge pressure. So if you've ever gone to measure the tire pressure and you pull the gauge out of your glove box, it doesn't read atmospheric pressure, it reads zero. Because it'd be pretty annoying that when you go to check your tire pressure, if you take the pressure of your tire and then have to sub subtract off the atmospheric pressure. Now maybe everyone would then have atmospheric pressure measured, but you don't always check your tire pressure. So instead the gauge is set up so that it reads zero underneath standard atmospheric pressure. And that way when you're pulling away um, the gauge from your tire, all you're getting is the pressure in the tire. Now, if you took that gauge to another planet where atmospheric pressure is different, then the gauge wouldn't work so well. So, gauge pressure is whenever the device or gauge is set up to read zero underneath atmospheric conditions. Alright, so there's one more thing we need to talk about here. And that happens if we have more than one layer of fluid. So we're going to take our container here, and we're going to have a layer of blue fluid, and we're going to have a layer of yellow fluid. So we're going to have H blue, and then we're going to have H yellow. And then up top we'll have the atmosphere. And whenever you're calculating absolute pressure, you're always adding whatever is above your area of interest. So if I'm trying to find the atmospheric pressure, or the absolute pressure here, I'm going to take the atmosphere plus the blue layer. So density of the blue fluid times G times the height of the blue fluid. But if I want to know what the pressure is at the bottom of the container, I'm going to add together the atmosphere plus the blue fluid, plus the yellow fluid. And notice I'm independently plugging in, this is HY, this is HB, I'm not adding them together ever. So that's how you handle if you have multiple fluids in the container.